to delia by samuel daniel from the world's best poetry volume five nature part one read for LibriVox.org by craig franklin to delia care charmer sleep son of the sable night brother to death in silent darkness born relieve my languish and restore the light with dark forgetting of my care return and let the day be time enough to mourn the shipwreck of my ill-adventured youth let waking eyes suffice to wail their scorn without the torment of the night's untruth cease dreams the images of day desires to model forth the passion of the morrow never let rising sun approve your liars to add more grief to aggravate my sorrow still let me sleep embracing clouds in vain and never wake to feel the day's disdain end of poem this recording is in the public domain the camp at night from the iliad book eight by homer translated from the greek by george chapman from the world's best poetry volume five nature part one read for librivox dot org by jason in panama the camp at night from the iliad book eight the winds transferred into the friendly sky their suppers savor to the which they sat delightfully and spent all night in open field fires round about them shined as when about the silver moon when air is free from wind and stars shine clear to whose sweet beams high prospects and the brows of all steep hills and pinnacles thrust up themselves for shows and even the lowly valleys joy to glitter in their sight when the unmeasured firmament bursts to disclose her light and all the signs in heaven are seen that glad the shepherd's heart so many fires disclose their beams made by the trojan part for the face of ilion and her bright turrets showed a thousand courts of guard kept fires and every guard allowed fifty stout men by whom their horse eat oats and hard white corn and all did wishfully expect the silver throned morn from the greek of homer translation of george chapman end of poem this recording is in the public domain to night by percy by shelley from the world's best poetry volume five nature part one read for librivox .org by sonia as the narrator craig franklin as death and jason in panama as sleep to night swiftly walk over the western wave spirit of night out of the misty eastern cave where all the long and lone daylight thou wovest dreams of joy and fear which make thee terrible and dear swift be thy flight wrap thy form in a mantle gray star inwrought blind with thine hair the eyes of day kiss her until she be wearied out then wander over city and sea and land touching all with thine opiate wand come long sought when i arose and saw the dawn i sighed for thee when light rode high and the dew was gone and noon lay heavy on flower and tree and the weary day turned to her rest lingering like an unloved guest i sighed for thee thy brother death came and cried wouldst thou me thy sweet child sleep the filmy eyed murmured like a noontide bee shall i nestle near thy side wouldst thou me and i replied no not thee death will come when thou art dead soon too soon sleep will come when thou art fled of neither would i ask the boon i ask of thee beloved night 
swift be thine approaching flight come soon soon end of poem this recording is in the public domain night by joseph blanco white from the world's best poetry volume five nature part one read for librivox dot org by sonia night mysterious night when our first parent knew thee from report divine i heard thy name did he not tremble for this lovely frame this glorious canopy of light and blue yet neath a curtain of translucent dew bathed in the rays of the great setting flame hesperus with the host of heaven came and lo creation widened in man's view who could have thought such darkness lay concealed within thy beams o sun or who could find whilst fly and leaf and insect stood revealed that to such countless orbs thou madest us blind why do we then shun death with anxious strife if light can thus deceive wherefore not life end of poem this recording is in the public domain night from child harold canto two by lord byron from the world's best poetry volume five nature part one read for librivox dot org by craig franklin night tis night when meditation bids us feel we once have loved though love is at an end the heart lone mourner of its baffled zeal though friendless now will dream it had a friend who with the weight of years would wish to bend when youth itself survives young love and joy alas when mingling souls forget to blend death hath but little left him to destroy ah happy years once more who would not be a boy thus bending over the vessel's laving side to gaze on dian's wave reflected sphere the soul forgets her schemes of hope and pride and flies unconscious o'er each backward year none are so desolate but something dear dearer than self possesses or possessed a thought and claims the homage of a tear a flashing pang of which the weary breast would still albeit in vain the heavy heart divest to sit on rocks to muse o'er flood and fell to slowly trace the forest shady scene where things that own not man's dominion dwell and mortal foot hath ne'er or rarely been to climb the trackless mounting all unseen with the wild flock that never needs a fold alone or steeps and foaming falls to lean this is not solitude tis but to hold converse with nature's charms and view her stores unrolled but midst the crowd the hum the shock of men to hear to see to feel and to possess and roam along the world's tired denizen with none who bless us none whom we can bless minions of splendour shrinking from distress none that with kindred consciousness endued if we were not would seem to smile the less of all that flattered followed sought and sued this is to be alone this this is solitude end of poem this recording is in the public domain. Night by Percy Bysshe Shelley From the World's Best Poetry, Volume 5, Nature, Part 1 
Read for LibriVox.org by Lian Yao. Night from Queen Mab. How beautiful this night! The balmiest sigh which vernal zephyrs breathe in evening's air were discord to the speaking quietude that wraps this moveless scene. Heaven's ebon vault, studded with stars unutterably bright, through which the moon's unclouded grandeur rolls, seems like a canopy which love has spread to curtain her sleeping world. Yon gentle hills, robed in a garment of untrodden snow, Yon darksome rocks, whence icicles depend so stainless that their white and glittering spires tinge not the moon's pure beam. Yon castle steep, whose banner hangeth o'er the time-worn tower so idly that rapt fancy deemeth it a metaphor of peace. All form is seen where musing solitude might love to lift her soul above this sphere of earthliness where silence undisturbed might watch alone so cold so bright so still the orb of day in southern climes o'er ocean's waveless field sinks sweetly smiling not the faintest breath steals o'er the unruffled deep the clouds of eve reflect unmoved the lingering beam of day and vesper's image on the western main is beautifully still to-morrow comes cloud upon cloud in dark and deepening mass rolls o'er the blackened waters the deep roar of distant thunder mutters awfully tempest unfolds its pinion o'er the gloom that shrouds the boiling surge the pitiless fiend with all his winds and lightnings track his prey the torn deep yawns the vessel finds a grave beneath its jagged gulf end of poem this recording is in the public domain hymn to the night by henry wadsworth longfellow from the world's best poetry volume five nature part one read for librivox dot org by sonia hymn to the night aspasie tridistos i heard the trailing garments of the night sweep through her marble halls i saw her sable skirts all fringed with light from the celestial walls i felt her presence by its spell of might stoop over me from above the calm majestic presence of the night as of the one i love i heard the sounds of sorrow and delight the manifold soft chimes that filled the haunted chambers of the night like some old poet's rhymes from the cool cisterns of the midnight air my spirit drank repose the fountain of perpetual peace flows there from those deep cisterns flows o holy night from thee i learn to bear what man has borne before thou layest thy finger on the lips of care and they complain no more peace peace o resties like i breathe this prayer descend with broad-winged flight the welcome the thrice prayed for the most fair, the best beloved night. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. In the Wide Awe and Wisdom of the Night by Charles G. D. Roberts. From the World's Best Poetry, Volume 5, Nature, Part 1. Read for LibriVox.org. By Craig Franklin. In the wide awe and wisdom of the night. In the wide awe and wisdom of the night, I saw the round world rolling on its way. Beyond significance of depth or height, 
Beyond the interchange of dark and day, I marked the march to which is set no pause, And that stupendous orbit round whose rim The great sphere sweeps, obedient unto laws That utter the eternal thought of him. I compass time, outstrip the starry speed, And in my still soul apprehended space, Till weighing laws, which these but blindly heed, At last I came before him face to face, And knew the universe of no such span As the august infinitude of man. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. A hymn. From the Conclusion of the Seasons by James Thompson. From the World's Best Poetry, Volume 5. Nature, Part 1. Read for LibriVox.org by Thomas Peter. A Hymn. From the Conclusion of the Seasons. These, as they change, Almighty Father, these are but the varied God. The rolling year is full of thee. Forth in the pleasing spring thy beauty walks, thy tenderness and love. Wide flush the fields, the softening air is balm, echo the mountains round, the forest smiles, and every sense and every heart is joy. Then comes thy glory in the summer months, with light and heat refulgent. Then thy sun shoots full perfection through the swelling year, and oft thy voice in dreadful thunder speaks, and oft at dawn, deep noon, or falling eve, by brooks and groves and hollow whispering gales, thy bounty shines in autumn unconfined, and spreads a common feast for all that lives. In winter awful thou, with clouds and storms around thee thrown, tempest o'er tempest rolled, majestic darkness, on the whirlwind's wing, riding sublime, thou bidst the world adore, and humblest nature with thy northern blast. Mysterious round, what skill, what force divine, deep felt in these appear, a simple train, yet so delightful mixed, with such kind art, such beauty and beneficence combined, shade, unperceived, so softening into shade, and all so forming in a harmonious whole, that, as they still succeed, they ravish still. But wandering oft, with brute unconscious gaze, man marks not thee, marks not the mighty hand that, ever busy, wheels the silent spheres, works in the secret deep, Shoots, steaming, thence the fair profusion that o'erspreads the spring, Flings from the sun direct the flaming day, Feeds every creature, hurls the tempest forth, And, as on earth this grateful change revolves, With transport touches all the springs of life. Nature, attend! Join every living soul Beneath the spacious temple of the sky In adoration join and ardent raise one general song to him ye vocal gales breathe soft whose spirit in your freshness breathes o oh, talk of him in solitary glooms where o'er the rock the scarcely waving pine fills the brown shade with a religious awe and ye whose bolder note is heard afar who shake the astonished world lift high to heaven the impetuous song and say from whom you rage his praise ye brooks a tune ye trembling rills and let me catch it as i muse along ye headlong torrents rapid and profound ye softer floods that lead the humid maze along the vale and thou majestic main a secret world of wonders in thyself sound his stupendous praise whose greater voice or bids you roar or bids your roarings fall soft roll your incense herbs and fruits and flowers in mingled clouds to him whose sun exalts whose breath perfumes you 
and whose pencil paints ye forests bend ye harvests wave to him breathe your still song into the reaper's heart as home he goes beneath the joyous moon ye that keep watch in heaven as earth asleep unconscious lies effuse your mildest beams ye constellations while your angels strike amid the spangled sky the silver lyre great source of day best image here below of thy creator ever pouring wide from world to world the vital ocean round on nature write with every beam his praise the thunder rolls be hushed the prostrate world while cloud to cloud returns the solemn hymn bleed out afresh ye hills ye mossy rocks retain the sound the broad responsive low ye valleys raise for the great shepherd reigns and his unsuffering kingdom yet will come ye woodlands all awake a boundless song burst from the groves and when the restless day expiring lays the warbling world asleep sweetest of birds sweet philomela charm the listening shades and teach the night his praise ye chief for whom the whole creation smiles at once the head the heart and tongue of all crown the great hymn in swarming cities vast assembled men to the deep organ join the long resounding voice oft breaking clear at solemn pauses through the swelling bass and as each mingling flame increases each in one united ardor rise to heaven or if you rather choose a rural shade and find a fane in every sacred grove there let the shepherd's flute the virgin's lay the prompting seraph and the poet's lyre still sing the god of seasons as they roll for me when i forget the darling theme whether the blossom blows the summer ray russets the plain inspiring autumn gleams or winter rises in the blackening east be my tongue mute my fancy paint no more and dead to joy forget my heart to beat should fate command me to the farthest verge of the green earth to distant barbarous climes rivers unknown to song where first the sun gilds indian mountains or his setting beam flames on the atlantic isles tis not to me since god is ever present ever felt in the void waste as in the city full and where he vital breathes there must be joy and when at last the solemn hour shall come and wing my mystic flight to future worlds i cheerful will obey there with new powers will rising wonders sing i cannot go where universal love not smiles around sustaining all yon orbs and all their sons from seeming evil still adducing good and better thence again and better still in infinite progression but i lose myself in him in light ineffable come then expressive silence muse his praise end of poem this recording is in the public domain march by william morris from the world's best poetry volume five nature part one read for librivox.org by craig franklin as the narrator lian yao as the birds and sonia as death march slayer of winter art thou here again o oh, welcome thou that brings the summer night the bitter wind makes not thy victory vain nor will we mock thee for thy faint blue sky welcome o oh march whose kindly days and dry make april ready for the throstle song thou first redresser of the winter's wrong yea welcome march and though i die ere june yet for the hope of life i give thee praise striving to swell the burden of the tune that even now i hear thy brown birds raise unmindful of the past or coming days who sing o oh joy a new year is begun 
What happiness to look upon the sun! Oh, what begetteth all this storm of bliss but death himself, who crying solemnly, even from the heart of sweet forgetfulness, bids us rejoice, lest pleasureless ye die. Within a little time must ye go by. Stretch forth your open hands, and while ye live, take all the gifts that death and life may give. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. When the Hounds of Spring by Algernon Charles Swinburne From the World's Best Poetry, Volume 5, Nature, Part 1 Read for LibriVox.org by Thomas Peter When the Hounds of Spring When the hounds of spring are on winter's traces, The mother of months in meadow or plain Fills the shadows and windy places With lisp of leaves and ripple of rain and the brown bright nightingale amorous is half assuaged for itilus for the thracian ships and the foreign faces the tongueless vigil and all the pain come with bows bent and with emptying of quivers maiden most perfect lady of light with a noise of winds in many rivers with a clamour of waters and with might bind on thy sandals o thou most fleet over the splendour and speed of thy feet for the faint east quickens the wan west shivers round the feet of the day and the feet of the night where shall we find her how shall we sing to her fold our hands round her knees and cling O oh, that man's heart were as fire, and could spring to her, fire, or the strength of the streams that spring, for the stars and the winds are unto her, as raiment, as songs of the harp player, for the risen stars and the fallen cling to her, and the southwest wind and the west wind sing, for winter's rains and ruins are over and all the season of snows and sins, the days dividing lover and lover, the light that loses, the night that wins, and time remembered its grief forgotten, and frosts are slain, and flowers begotten, and in green underwood and cover blossom by blossom the spring begins. The full streams feed on flower of rushes, Ripe grasses trammel a travelling foot. The faint fresh flame of the young year flushes From leaf to flower and flower to fruit. And fruit and leaf are as gold and fire, And the oat is heard above the lyre, And the hoofed heel of a satyr crushes The chestnut husk at the chestnut root. And pan by noon, and bacchus by night, Fleeter of foot than the fleet foot kid, Follows with dancing and fills with delight The maenad and the basarid. And soft his lips that laugh and hide, The laughing leaves of the trees divide, And screen from seeing and leave in sight The god pursuing, the maiden hid. The ivy falls with the bacchanal's hair Over her eyebrows shading her eyes. The wild vine slipping down leaves bare her bright breast shortening into sighs. The wild vine slips with the weight of its leaves, but the buried ivy catches and cleaves to the limbs that glitter, the feet that scare the wolf that follows, the fawn that flies. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. March by William Wordsworth From the World's Best Poetry, Volume 5, Nature, Part 1 Read for LibriVox.org by Sonia March The cock is crowing, the stream is flowing, 
the small birds twitter the lake doth glitter the green field sleeps in the sun the oldest and youngest are at work with the strongest the cattle are grazing their heads never raising there are forty feeding like one like an army defeated the snow hath retreated and now doth fare ill on the top of the bare hill the ploughboy is whooping anon anon there's joy on the mountains there's life in the fountains small clouds are sailing blue sky prevailing the rain is over and gone end of poem this recording is in the public domain spring the sweet spring by thomas nash from the world's best poetry volume five nature part one read for librivox dot org by jason in panama spring the sweet spring spring the sweet spring is the year's pleasant king then blooms each thing then maids dance in a ring cold doth not sting the pretty birds do sing cuckoo jug jug poo way to wit a woo the palm in may make country houses gay lambs frisk and play the shepherds pipe all day and we hear a birds tune this merry lay cuckoo jug jug poo way to wit a woo the fields breathe sweet the daisies kiss our feet young lovers meet old wives a sunning sit in every street these tunes our ears do greet cuckoo jug jug poo way to wit a woo spring the sweet spring thomas nash end of poem this recording is in the public domain return of spring from the french of pierre ronsard from the world's best poetry volume five nature part one read for LibriVox.org by craig franklin return of spring god shield ye heralds of the spring ye faithful swallows fleet of wing hoops cuckoos nightingales turtles and every wilder bird that makes your hundred chirpings heard through the green woods and dales god shield ye easter daisies all fair roses buds and blossoms small and he who mursed the gore of ajax and narcis did print ye wild thyme anise balm and mint i welcome ye once more god shield ye bright embroidered train of butterflies that on the plain of each sweet herblet sip and ye new swarms of bees that go where the pink flowers and yellow grow to kiss them with your lip a hundred thousand times i call a hearty welcome on ye all this season how i love this merry din on every shore for winds and storms whose sullen roar forbade my steps to rove end of poem this recording is in the public domain spring by thomas gray from the world's best poetry volume five nature part one read for librivox dot org by jason in panama spring lo where the rosy bosomed hours fair venus's train appear and wake the purple year the attic warbler pours her throat responsive to the cuckoo's note the untaught harmony of spring while whispering pleasure as they fly cool zephyrs through the clear blue sky their gathered fragrance fling where'er the oak's thick branches stretch a broader browner shade where'er the rude and moss-grown beech or canopies the glade beside some water's rushy brink with me the muse shall sit and think at ease reclined in rustic state 
how vain the ardor of the crowd how low how little are the proud how indigent the great still is the toiling hand of care the panting herds repose yet hark how through the peopled air the busy murmur glows the insect youth are on the wing eager to taste the honeyed spring and float amid the liquid noon some lightly o'er the current skim some show their gaily gilded trim quick glancing to the sun to contemplation's sober eye such is the race of man and that they creep and that they fly shall end where they began alike the busy and the gay but flutter through life's little day in fortune's varying colors dressed brushed by the hand of rough mischance or chilled by age their airy dance they leave in dust to rest methinks i hear in accents low the sportive kind reply poor moralist and what art thou a solitary fly thy joys no glittering female meets no hive hast thou of hoarded sweets no painted plumage to display on hasty wings thy youth is flown thy sun is set thy spring is gone we frolic while tis may thomas gray end of poem this recording is in the public domain summer longings by dennis florence mccarthy from the world's best poetry volume five nature part one read for LibriVox.org by thomas peter summer longings ah my heart is weary waiting waiting for the may waiting for the pleasant rambles where the fragrant hawthorn brambles with the woodbine alternating send the dewy way ah my heart is weary waiting waiting for the may ah my heart is sick with longing longing for the may longing to escape from the study to the young face fair and ruddy and the thousand charms belonging to the summer's day ah my heart is sick with longing longing for the may ah my heart is sore with sighing sighing for the may sighing for their sure returning when the summer beams are burning hopes and flowers are dead or dying all the winter lay ah my heart is sore with sighing sighing for the may ah my heart is pained with throbbing throbbing for the may throbbing for the seaside billows or the water wooing willows where in laughing and in sobbing glide the streams away ah my heart my heart is throbbing throbbing for the may waiting sad dejected weary waiting for the may spring goes by with wasted warnings 
Moonlit evenings, sunbright mornings. Summer comes yet dark and dreary. Life still ebbs away. Man is ever weary, weary, waiting for the May. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Sweetly Breathing Vernal Air by Thomas Carew from The World's Best Poetry, Volume 5, Nature, Part 1, read for LibriVox.org by Jason in Panama. Sweetly Breathing Vernal Air Sweetly Breathing Vernal Air, that with kind warmth doth repair winter's ruins, from whose breast all the gums and spice of the east borrow their perfumes, whose eye gilds the morn and clears the sky, whose dishevelled tresses shed pearls upon the violet bed, on whose brow with calm smiles dressed the halcyon sits and builds her nest. Beauty, youth, and endless spring dwell upon thy rosy wing. Thou, if stormy Boreas throws down whole forests when he blows, with a pregnant flowery birth canst refresh the teeming earth if he nip the early bud if he blast what's fair or good if he scatter our choice flowers if he shake our halls or bowers if his rude breath threaten us thou canst stroke great aeolus and from him the grace obtain to bind him in an iron chain thomas carew end of poem this recording is in the public domain. Home Thoughts from Abroad by Robert Browning From the World's Best Poetry Volume 5, Nature, Part 1 Read for LibriVox.org by Leanne Yao Home Thoughts from Abroad 1 oh to be in england now that april's there and whoever wakes in england sees some morning unaware that the lowest boughs and the brushwood sheaf round the elm tree bowl are in tiny leaf while the chaffinch sings on the orchard bough in england now two and after april when may follows and the white throat builds and all the swallows hark where my blossomed pear tree in the hedge leans to the field and scatters on the clover blossoms and dewdrops at the bent spray's edge that's the wise thrush he sings each song twice over lest you should think he never could recapture the first fine careless rapture and though the fields look rough with hoary dew all will be gay when noontide wakes anew the buttercups the little children's dower, far brighter than this gaudy melon flower. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. May Morning by Celia Sexter From the World's Best Poetry, Volume 5, Nature, Part 1 Read for LibriVox.org by Sonia may morning warm wild rainy wind blowing fitfully stirring dreamy breakers on the slumberous may sea what shall fail to answer thee what thing shall withstand the spell of thine enchantment flowing over sea and land all along the swamp edge in the rain i go all about my head thou the loosened locks dost blow like the german goose girl in the fairy tale i watch across the shining pool my flock of ducks that sail redly gleam the rose haws dripping with the wet fruit of sombre autumn glowing crimson yet slender sorts of iris leaves cut the water clear and light green creeps the tender grass 
thick spreading far and near every last year's stalk is set with brown or golden studs all the boughs of bayberry are thick with scented buds islanded in turfy velvet where the ferns uncurl lo the large white duck's egg glimmers like a pearl softly sing the billows rushing whispering low freshly o oh, deliciously the warm wild wind doth blow plaintive bleat of new-washed lambs comes faint from far away and clearly cry the little birds alert and blithe and gay o oh, happy happy morning o oh, dear familiar place o oh, warm sweet tears of heaven fast falling on my face o oh, well-remembered rainy wind blow all my care away that i may be a child again this blissful morn of may end of poem this recording is in the public domain song on may morning by john milton from the world's best poetry volume five nature part one read for librivox dot org by jason in panama song on may morning now the bright morning star day's harbinger comes dancing from the east and leads with her the flowery may who from her green lap throws the yellow cowslip and the pale primrose hail bounteous may that doth inspire mirth and youth and warm desire woods and groves are of thy dressing hill and dale doth boast thy blessing thus we salute thee with our early song and welcome thee and wish thee long milton end of poem this recording is in the public domain spring in carolina by henry timrod from the world's best poetry volume five nature part one read for librivox dot org by jason in panama as the narrator and lian yao as the dryad spring in carolina spring with that nameless pathos in the air which dwells with all things fair spring with her golden suns and silver rain is with us once again out in the lonely woods the jasmine burns its fragrant lamps and turns into a royal court with green festoons the banks of dark lagoons in the deep heart of every forest tree the blood is all aglee and there's a look about the leafless bowers as if they dreamed of flowers yet still on every side we trace the hand of winter in the land save where the maple reddens on the lawn flushed by the season's dawn or where like those strange semblances we find that age to childhood bind the elm puts on as if in nature's scorn the brown of autumn corn as yet the turf is dark although you know that not a span below a thousand germs are groping through the gloom and soon will burst their tomb in gardens you may note amid the dearth the crocus breaking earth and near the snowdrops tender white and green the violet in its screen but many gleams and shadows need must pass along the budding grass and weeks go by before the enamoured south shall kiss the rose's mouth still there's a sense of blossoms yet unborn in the sweet airs of morn one almost looks to see the very street grow purple at his feet at times a fragrant breeze comes floating by and brings you know not why a feeling as when eager crowds await before a palace gate some wondrous pageant and you scarce would start if from a beech's heart a blue-eyed dryad stepping forth should say behold me I am May. End of poem. 
This recording is in the public domain. Spring by Ebenezer Elliot From the World's Best Poetry Volume 5 Nature Part 1 Read for LibriVox.org by Lian Yao Spring Again the violet of our early days Drinks beauteous azure from the golden sun And kindles into fragrance at his blaze The streams rejoice that winter's work is done Talk of tomorrow's cowslips as they run. Wild apple, thou art blushing into bloom. Thy leaves are coming, snowy blossomed thorn. Wake, buried lily, spirit, quit thy tomb. And thou shade loving hyacinth, be born. Then haste, sweet rose, sweet woodbine, hymn the morn, whose dewdrop shall illume with pearly light each grassy blade that thick embattled stands from sea to sea, while daisies infinite uplift in praise their glowing hands o'er er every hill that under heaven expands. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Die Down, O Dismal Day by David Gray From the World's Best Poetry, Volume 5, Nature, Part 1 Read for LibriVox.org by Jason in Panama Die Down, O Dismal Day Die Down, O Dismal Day, and let me live And come, blue deeps, magnificently strewn with colored clouds Large, light, and fugitive By upper winds through pompous motions blown now it is death in life a vapor dense creeps round my window till i cannot see the far snow shining mountains and the glens shagging the mountain tops o oh god make free this barren shackled earth so deadly cold breathe gently forth thy spring till winter flies in rude amazement fearful and yet bold while she performs her customed charities I weigh the loaded hours till life is bare. O oh God, for one clear day, a snowdrop and sweet air. David Gray End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Morning in May by Geoffrey Chaucer From the World's Best Poetry, Volume 5, Nature, Part 1 Read for LibriVox.org by Sonia as the narrator and Thomas Peter as Arcit. Morning in May from the Canterbury Pilgrims, the Knichtestale. The busy larke, messenger of dire, saluteth in here a song the more greye, and fiery Phoebus riseth up so brichte that all the Orient laugheth of the lichte and with his streamers dreeth in the graves the silver dropers hanging on the leaves and our seat that is in the court royal with theses his queer principal is risen and looketh on the merry day and for to dawn his observance to may remembering on the point of his desire he on his courser starting as the fear is ridden into the fieldes him to play out of the court where it a meal or twire and to the grove of which that i yo tolde by aventure his way he gan to holde to marken him a garland of the greves where it of woodbinde or hawthorn leves and laude he sung against the sonne schene may with allerlei flowers in the grain welcome be thou well fairer fresh a may I hope that I some green get to me. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Cuckoo Song by Anonymous From the World's Best Poetry, Volume 5, Nature, Part 1 Read for LibriVox.org by Sonia Cuckoo Song 
Summary sicumen in lude sing cucu. Groweth it and bloweth it and springeth the wood anew. Sing cucu, sing cucu no. Sing cucu, sing cucu, sing cucu no. I will bet that after long look after cover cu. Bullock stealth as book of it as mood ye sing cucu. Singest du Kuku, ne swicht du nave nu. Wer singest du Kuku, ne swicht du nave nu. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Spring by Alfred Lord Tennyson. From the World's Best Poetry, Volume 5. Nature, Part 1. Read for LibriVox.org by Thomas Peter. And Craig Franklin. Spring from In Memoriam. 82. Dip down upon the northern shore, O sweet new year, delaying long. Thou dost expectant nature wrong, delaying long. Delay no more. What stays thee from the clouded noons, thy sweetness from its proper place? Can trouble live with April days, or sadness in the summer moons? Bring Orcus, bring the foxglove spire, the little speedwell's darling blue, deep tulips dashed with fiery dew, laburnums dropping wells of fire. O oh, thou new year, delaying long, delayest the sorrow in my blood that longs to burst a frozen bud. And flood a fresher throat with song. One hundred and fourteen. Now fades the last long streak of snow. Now burgeons every maze of quick. About the flowering squares and thick, by ashen roots the violets blow. Now rings the woodland loud and long. The distance takes a lovelier hue, and drowned in yonder living blue, the lark becomes a sightless song now dance the lights on lawn and lea the flocks are whiter down the vale and milkier every milky sail on winding stream or distant sea where now the seamew pipes or dives in yonder greening gleam and fly the happy birds that change their sky to build and brood that live their lives from land to land and in my breast spring wakens too and my regret becomes an april violet and buds and blossoms like the rest end of poem this recording is in the public domain betrothed anew by edmund clarence stedman from the world's best poetry Volume 5, Nature, Part 1 Read for LibriVox.org by Lian Yao Betrothed Anew The sunlight fills the trembling air, And balmy days their guerdons bring. The earth again is young and fair, And amorous with musky spring. The golden nurslings of the May In splendour strew the spangled green, and hues of tender beauty play entangled where the willows lean mark how the rippled currents flow what lustres on the meadows lie and hark the songsters come and go and trill between the earth and sky who told us that the years had fled or born afar our blissful youth such joys are all about us spread we know the whisper was not truth the birds that break from grass and grove sing every carol that they sung when first our veins were rich with love and may her mantle round us flung o fresh lit dawn immortal life o earth's betrothal sweet and true with whose delights our souls are rife and i their vernal vows renew 
then darling walk with me this morn let your brown tresses drink its sheen these violets within them worn of floral fay shall make you queen what though there comes a time of pain when autumn winds forebode decay the days of love are born again that fabled time is far away and never seen the land so fair as now nor bird such notes to sing since first within your shining hair i wove the blossoms of the spring end of poem this recording is in the public domain The Plowman by Oliver Wendell Holmes From the World's Best Poetry, Volume 5, Nature, Part 1 Read for LibriVox.org by Jason in Panama The Plowman Clear the brown path to meet his coulter's gleam Lo, on he comes behind his smoking team With toil's bright dewdrops on his sunburnt brow The Lord of Earth, the Hero of the Plow First in the field before the reddening sun, Last in the shadows when the day is done, Line after line along the bursting sod Marks the broad acres where his feet have trod. Still where he treads the stubborn clods divide, The smooth, fresh furrow opens deep and wide, Matted and dense the tangled turf upheaves, Mellow and dark the ridgy cornfield cleaves up the steep hillside where the laboring train slants the long track that scores the level plain through the moist valley clogged with oozing clay the patient convoy breaks its destined way at every turn the loosening chains resound the swinging ploughshare circles glistening round till the wide field one billowy waste appears and wearied hands unbind the panting steers. These are the hands whose sturdy labor brings the peasant's food, the golden pomp of kings. This is the page whose letters shall be seen, changed by the sun to words of living green. This is the scholar whose immortal pen spells the first lesson hunger taught to men these are the lines that heaven commanded toil shows on his deed the charter of the soil o oh, gracious mother whose benignant breast wakes us to life and lulls us all to rest how thy sweet features kind to every clime mock with their smile the wrinkled front of time we stain thy flowers they blossom o'er the dead we rend thy bosom and it gives us bread o'er the red field that trampling strife has torn waves the green plumage of thy tasseled corn our maddening conflicts scar thy fairest plain still thy soft answer is the growing grain yet o oh, our mother while uncounted charms steal round our hearts in thine embracing arms let not our virtues in thy love decay and thy fond sweetness waste our strength away. No, by these hills whose banners now displayed In blazing cohorts autumn has arrayed. By yon twin summits, on whose splintery crests The tossing hemlocks hold the eagle's nests. By these fair plains the mountain circles screens, And feeds with streamlets from its dark ravines true to their home these faithful arms shall toil to crown with peace their own untainted soil and true to god to freedom to mankind if her chained band-dogs faction shall unbind these stately forms that bending even now bowed their strong manhood to the humble plough shall rise erect the guardians of the land the same stern iron in the same right hand till o'er their hills the shouts of triumph run the sword has rescued what the ploughshare won oliver wendell holmes end of poem this recording is in the public domain
the plough by richard hengist horn from the world's best poetry volume five nature part one read for librivox.org by craig franklin the plough above yon sombre swell of land thou seest the dawn's grave orange hue with one pale streak like yellow sand and over that a vein of blue the air is cold above the woods all silent is the earth and sky except with his own lonely moods the blackbird holds a colloquy over the broad hill creeps a beam like hope that gilds a good man's brow and now ascends the nostril stream of stalwart horses come to plough ye rigid ploughmen bear in mind your labour is for future hours advance spare not nor look behind plough deep and straight with all your powers end of poem this recording is in the public domain they come the merry summer months by william motherwell from the world's best poetry volume five nature part one read for LibriVox.org by thomas peter they come the merry summer months they come the merry summer months of beauty song and flowers they come the gladsome months that bring thick leafiness to bowers up up my heart and walk abroad fling cark and care aside seek silent hills or rest thyself where peaceful waters glide or underneath the shadow vast of patriarchal tree scan through its leaves the cloudless sky in rapt tranquillity the grass is soft its velvet touch is grateful to the hand and like the kiss of maiden love the breeze is sweet and bland the daisy and the buttercup are nodding courteously it stirs their blood with kindest love to bless and welcome thee and mark how with thine own thin locks they now are silvery gray that blissful breeze is wantoning and whispering be gay there is no cloud that sails along the ocean of yon sky but hath its own winged mariners to give it melody thou seest their glittering fans outspread all gleaming like red gold and hark with shrill pipe musical their merry course they hold god bless them all those little ones who far above this earth can make a scoff of its mean joys and vent a nobler mirth but soft mine ear up caught a sound from yonder wood it came the spirit of the dim green glade did breathe its own glad name yes it is he the hermit bird that apart from all his kind slow spells his bees monotonous to the soft western wind cuckoo cuckoo he sings again his notes are void of art but simplest strains do soonest sound the deep founts of the heart good lord it is a gracious boon for thought crazed white like me to smell again the summer flowers beneath this summer tree to suck once more in every breath their little souls away and feed my fancy with fond dreams of youth's bright summer day when rushing forth like untamed colt the reckless truant boy wandered through green woods all day long a mighty heart of joy i'm sadder now i've had cause but oh i'm proud to think that each pure joy fount loved of yore i yet delight to drink leaf blossom blade hill valley stream the calm unclouded sky still mingle music with my dreams as in the days gone by when summer's loveliness and light fall round me dark and cold i'll bear indeed life's heaviest curse a heart that hath waxed old end of poem this recording is in the public domain
Song of the Summer Winds by George Darley From the World's Best Poetry, Volume 5, Nature, Part 1 Read for LibriVox.org by Lian Yao Song of the Summer Winds Up the dale and down the bourne, O'er the meadow swift we fly, Now we sing and now we mourn, Now we whistle, now we sigh. By the grassy fringed river through the murmuring reeds we sweep mid the lily leaves we quiver to their very hearts we creep now the maiden rose is blushing at the frolic things we say while aside her cheek we're rushing like some truant bees at play through the booming graves we rustle kissing every bud we pass as we did it in the bustle scarcely knowing how it was down the glen across the mountain o'er the yellow heath we roam whirling round about the fountain till its little breakers foam bending down the weeping willows while our vesper hymn we sigh then unto our rosy pillows on our weary wings we hie there of idleness's dreaming scarce from waking we refrain moments long as ages deeming till we're at our play again End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. A Drop of Dew by Andrew Marvel from the World's Best Poetry, Volume 5, Nature, Part 1. Read for LibriVox.org by Jason in Panama. A Drop of Dew. See how the Orient dew shed from the bosom of the morn into the blowing roses yet careless of its mansion new for the clear region where twas born round in itself encloses and in its little globe's extent frames as it can its native element how it the purple flower does slight scarce touching where it lies but gazing back upon the skies shines with a mournful light like its own tear because so long divided from the sphere restless it rolls and unsecure trembling lest it grow impure till the warm sun pities its pain and to the skies exhales it back again so the soul that drop that ray of the clear fountain of eternal day could it within the human flower be seen remembering still its former height shuns the sweet leaves and blossoms green and recollecting its own light does in its pure and circling thoughts express the greater heaven in a heaven less in how coy a figure wound every way it turns away so the world excluding round yet receiving in the day dark beneath but bright above here disdaining there in love how loose and easy hence to go how girt and ready to ascend moving but on a point below it all about does upwards bend such did the mana's sacred dew distill white and entire although congealed and chill congealed on earth but does dissolving run into the glories of the almighty sun andrew marvel end of poem this recording is in the public domain. June by William Cullen Bryant From the World's Best Poetry, Volume 5, Nature, Part 1 Read for LibriVox.org by Sonia June I gazed upon the glorious sky And the green mountains round And thought that when I came to lie At rest within the ground twere pleasant that in flowery june when brooks send up a cheerful tune and groves a cheerful sound the sexton's hand my grave to make the rich green mountain turf should break a cell within the frozen mould a coffin borne through sleet and icy clods above it rolled while fierce the tempests beat away i will not think of these blue be the sky and soft the breeze earth green beneath the feet and be the damp mould gently pressed into my narrow place of rest 
there through the long long summer hours the golden light should lie and thick young herbs and groups of flowers stand in their beauty by the oriole should build and tell his love tale close beside my cell the idle butterfly should rest him there and there be heard the housewife be and humming bird and what if cheerful shouts at noon come from the village sent or song of maids beneath the moon with fairy laughter blend and what if in the evening light betrothed lovers walk in sight of my low monument i would the lovely scene around might know no sadder sight nor sound i know that i no more should see the season's glorious show nor would its brightness shine for me nor its wild music flow but if around my place of sleep the friends i love should come to weep they might not haste to go soft airs and song and light and bloom should keep them lingering by my tomb these to their softened hearts should bear the thought of what has been and speak of one who cannot share the gladness of the scene whose part in all the pomp that fills the circuit of the summer hills is that his grave is green and deeply would their hearts rejoice to hear again his living voice end of poem this recording is in the public domain The Story of a Summer Day by Alexander Hume from The World's Best Poetry, Volume 5, Nature, Part 1, read for LibriVox.org by Jason in Panama. The Story of a Summer Day O perfect light, which shade away the darkness from the light, and set a ruler o'er the day, another o'er the night. Thy glory, when the day forth flies, more vividly doth appear than at midday unto our eyes the shining sun is clear the shadow of the earth anon removes and draws by while in the east when it is gone appears a clearer sky which soon perceive the little larks the lapwing and the snipe and tune their songs like nature's clerks o'er meadow muir and stripe our hemisphere is polished clean and lightened more and more while everything is clearly seen which seem it dim before except the glistering asters bright which all the night were clear offuscate with a greater light no longer do appear the golden globe incontinent sets up his shining head and o'er the earth and firmament displays his beams abread for joy the birds with bolden throats against his visage sheen take up their kindly music notes in woods and gardens green the dew upon the tender crops like pearless white and round or like to melted silver drops refreshes all the ground the misty reek the clouds of rain from tops of mountain scales clear are the highest hills and plain the vapors take the veils the ample heaven of fabric sure in cleanness does surpass the crystal and the silver pure or clearest polished glass the time so tranquil is and still that nowhere shall ye find save on a high and barren hill an air of peeping wind all trees and simples great and small that balmy leaf do bear than they were painted on a wall no more they move or stare calm is the deep and purple sea yea smoother than the sand the waves that weltering want to be are stable like the land so silent is the sessile air that every cry and call the hills and dales and forest fair again repeats them all the flourishes and fragrant flowers through phoebus fostering heat refreshed with dew and silver showers cast up an odor sweet 
the cloggit busy humming bees that never think to drone on flowers and flourishes of trees collect their liquor brown the sun most like a speedy post with ardent course ascends the beauty of the heavenly host up to our zenith tends not guided by a phaeton not trained by a chair but by the high and holy one who does all wear empire the burning beams down from his face so fervently can beat that man and beast now seek a place to save them from the heat the herds beneath some leafy tree amidst the flowers they lie the stable ships upon the sea tend up their sails to dry with gilded eyes and open wings the cock his courage shows with clasps of joy his breast he dings and twenty times he crows the dove with whistling wings so blue the winds can fast collect her purple pens turn many a hue against the sun direct now noon is went gone is midday the heat does slake at last the sun descends down west away for three of clock is past the rayons of the sun we see diminish in their strength the shade of every tower and tree extended is in length great is the calm for everywhere the wind is setting down the reek throws right up in the air from every tower and town the gloaming comes the day is spent the sun goes out of sight and painted is the occident with purple sanguine bright the scarlet nor the golden thread who would their beauty try are nothing like the color red and beauty of the sky our west horizon circular from time the sun be set is all with rubies as it were or roses red or fret what pleasure were to walk and see and long a river clear the perfect form of every tree within the deep appear oh then it were a seemly thing while all is still and calm the praise of god to play and sing with cornet and with shalm all laborers draw home at even and can to others say thanks to the gracious god of heaven which sent this summer day alexander hume end of poem this recording is in the public domain knee deep in june by james whitcomb riley from the world's best poetry volume five nature part one read for LibriVox.org by thomas peter knee deep in june one tell you what i like the best long about knee deep in june about the time strawberries melts on the vines so my afternoon like to just get out and rest and not work at nothing else two orchards where i'd rather be need fence it in for me just the whole sky overhead and the whole earth underneath sort of so's a man can breathe like he ought and kinda has elbow room to carelessly sprawl out lengthways on the grass with the shadows thick and soft as the kivers on the bed mother fixes in the loft always when there's company three just a sort of lazin there it's lazy at your peak and peer through the waving leaves above like a feller at in love and don't know it now don't care everything you hear and see got some sort of interest maybe find a bluebird's nest tucked up there conveniently for the boys that's apt to be up some other apple tree watch a swallow scootin past about as peer as you could ask the yeah, bob white rays and whiz with some others whistle is four catch a shadow down below and look up to find the crow or a hawk away up there apparently froze in the air hear the old hen squawk and squat over every chick she's got sudden like 
and she knows where that air hawk is well as you you just bet your life she do eyes a glittering like glass wet until it makes a pass five Pee-wee singing to express my opinion second class you chill hear him more or less sap sucks getting down to biz weeding out the lonesomeness mr blue jay full of sass in them baseball clothes of his sporting round the orchard just like he owned the premises sun out in the fields can sizz but flat on your back i guess in the shades where glory is that's just what i like to do steady for a year or two six plague if they ain't something in work it kind of goes again my convictions long about here in june especially under some old apple tree just resting through and through i could get along without nothing else at all to do only just a wishing you was a getting there like me june was eternity seven lay up there and try to see just how lazy you can be tumble round and songs your head in the clover blooms a pull your straw hat across your eyes and peek through it at the skies thinking of old chums that's dead maybe smiling back at you in betwixt the beautiful clouds of gold and white and blue month of man can really love june you know i'm talking of eight march ain't never nothing new april's altogether too brash for me and may i just abominate his promises little hints of sunshine and green around the timberland a few blossoms and a few chippers and a sprout or two drop asleep and it turns in for daylight and snows again but when june comes clear my throat with wild honey wrench my hair in the dew and hold my coat whip out loud and throw my hat june wants me and i'm to spare spread them shadows anywhere i'll get down and wall there and oblige to you at that end of poem this recording is in the public domain ballad of midsummer days and nights by william ernest henley from the world's best poetry volume five nature part one Read for LibriVox.org by Thomas Peter. Ballad of Midsummer Days and Nights With a ripple of leaves and a tinkle of streams, The full world rolls in a rhythm of praise, And the winds are one with the clouds and beams. Midsummer days, midsummer days, The dusk grows vast, in a purple haze, Where the west from a rapture of sunset writes, Faint stars their exquisite lamps upraise. Midsummer nights, oh, midsummer nights. The wood's green heart is a nest of dreams. The lush grass thickens and springs and sways. The wraith wheat rustles, the landscape gleams. Midsummer days, midsummer days. In the stilly fields, in the stilly ways, all secret shadows and mystic lights late lovers murmurous linger and gaze midsummer nights oh midsummer nights there's a music of bells from the trampling teams wild skylarks hover the gorses blaze the rich ripe rose as with incense steams midsummer days midsummer days a soul from the honeysuckle strays and the nightingale as from prophet heights sings to the earth of her million mays midsummer nights oh midsummer nights envoy and it's oh for my dear and the charm that stays midsummer days midsummer days it's oh for my love and the dark that plights midsummer nights oh midsummer nights end of poem this recording is in the public domain. Invocation to Rain in Summer by William Cox Bennett From the World's Best Poetry, Volume 5, Nature, Part 1 Read for LibriVox.org by Lian Ya Invocation to Rain in Summer 
O oh, gentle, gentle summer rain, let not the silver lily pine, the drooping lily pine in vain to feel that dewy touch of thine, to drink thy freshness once again, O oh, gentle, gentle summer rain. In heat the landscape quivering lies, the cattle pant me the tree, through parching air and purple skies the earth looks up in vain for thee for thee for thee it looks in vain o oh, gentle gentle summer rain come thou and brim the meadow streams and soften all the hills with mist o oh, falling dew from burning dreams by thee shall herb and flower be kissed and earth shall bless thee yet again o oh, gentle gentle summer rain end of poem this recording is in the public domain rain in summer by henry wadsworth longfellow from the world's best poetry volume five nature part one read for librivox dot org by sonia rain in summer how beautiful is the rain after the dust and heat in the broad and fiery street in the narrow lane how beautiful is the rain how it clatters along the roofs like the tramp of hoofs how it gushes and struggles out from the throat of the overflowing spout across the window-pane it pours and pours and swift and wide with a muddy tide like a river down the gutter roars the rain the welcome rain the sick man from his chamber looks at the twisted brooks he can feel the cool breath of each little pool his fevered brain grows calm again and he breathes a blessing on the rain from the neighboring school come the boys with more than their wonted noise and commotion and down the wet streets sail their mimic fleets till the treacherous pool engulfs them in its whirling and turbulent ocean in the country on every side where far and wide like a leopard's tawny and spotted hide stretches the plain to the dry grass and the drier grain how welcome is the rain in the furrowed land the toilsome and patient oxen stand lifting the yoke encumbered head with their dilated nostrils spread they silently inhale the clover-scented gale and the vapours that arise from the well-watered and smoking soil for this rest in the furrow after toil their large and lustrous eyes seem to thank the lord more than man's spoken word near at hand from under the sheltering trees the farmer sees his pastures and his fields of grain as they bend their tops to the numberless beating drops of the incessant rain he counts it as no sin that he sees therein only his own thrift and gain these and far more than these the poet sees he can behold aquarius old walking the fenceless fields of air and from each ample fold of the clouds about him rolled scattering everywhere the showery rain as the farmer scatters his grain he can behold things manifold that have not yet been wholly told have not been wholly sung nor said for his thought that never stops follows the water drops down to the graves of the dead down through chasms and gulfs profound to the dreary fountainhead of lakes and rivers underground and sees them when the rain is done on the bridge of colours seven climbing up once more to heaven opposite the setting sun thus the seer with vision clear sees forms appear and disappear in the perpetual round of strange mysterious change from birth to death from death to birth from earth to heaven from heaven to earth till glimpses more sublime of things unseen before unto his wandering eyes reveal the universe as an immeasurable wheel turning forevermore 
in the rapid and rushing river of time. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Before the Rain by Thomas Bailey Aldrich from the World's Best Poetry, Volume Five, Nature, Part One. Read for LibriVox.org by Sonia. Before the Rain, we knew it would rain for all the morn. A spirit on slender ropes of mist was lowering its golden buckets down into the vapory amethyst of marshes and swamps and dismal fens scooping the dew that lay in the flowers dipping the jewels out of the sea to scatter them over the land in showers we knew it would rain for the poplars showed the white of their leaves the amber grain shrunk in the wind and the lightning now is tangled in tremulous skeins of rain end of poem this recording is in the public domain Signs of Rain by Dr. Edward Jenner From the World's Best Poetry, Volume 5, Nature, Part 1 Read for LibriVox.org by Leanne Yao Signs of Rain Forty reasons for not accepting an invitation of a friend to make an excursion with him. 1. The hollow winds begin to blow. 2. The clouds look black, the glass is low. 3. The soot falls down, the spaniels sleep. 4. And spiders from their cobwebs peep. 5. Last night the sun went pale to bed. 6. The moon in halos hid her head. 7. The boding shepherd heaves a sigh. 8. For sea, a rainbow spans the sky. 9. The walls are damp, the ditches smell. 10. Closed is a pink-eyed pimpernel. 11. Hark how the chairs and tables crack. 12. Old Betty's nerves are on the rack. 13. Loud quacks the duck, the peacocks cry. 14. The distant hills are seeming nigh. 15. How restless are the snorting swine. 16. The busy flies disturb the kine. 17. Low o'er the grass the swallow wings. 18. The cricket too, how sharp he sings. 19. Puss on the hearth with velvet paws. 20. Sits wiping o'er her whiskered jaws. 21. Through the clear streams the fishes rise. 22. And nimbly catch the incautious flies. 23. The glow-worms numerous and light. 24. Illumed the dewy dell last night. 25. At dusk the squalid toad was seen. 26. Hopping and crawling o'er the green. 27. The whirling dust the wind obeys. 28. And in the rapid eddy plays. 29. The frog has changed his yellow vest. 30. And in a russet coat is dressed. 31. Though June, the air is cold and still. 32. The mellow blackbird's voice is shrill. 33. My dog, so altered in his taste. 34. Quits mutton bones on grass to feast. 35. And see yon rooks, how odd their flight. 36. They imitate the gliding kite. 37. And seem precipitate to fall. 38. As if they felt the piercing ball. 39. T'will surely rain, I see with sorrow. 40. Our jaunt must be put off to tomorrow. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Summer Storm by James Russell Lowell From the World's Best Poetry, Volume 5 Nature, Part 1 Read for LibriVox.org By Thomas Peter Summer Storm 
untremulous in the river clear toward the sky's image hangs the imaged bridge so still the air that i can hear the slender clarion of the unseen midge out of the stillness with a gathering creep like rising wind in leaves which now decreases now lulls now swells and all the while increases the huddling trample of a drove of sheep tilts the loose planks and then as gradually ceases in dust on the other side life's emblem deep a confused noise between two silences finding at last in dust precarious peace on the wide marsh the purple blossomed grasses soak up the sunshine sleeps the brimming tide save when the wedge-shaped wake in silence passes of some slow water rat whose sinuous glide wavers the long green sedge's shade from side to side but up the west like a rock shivered surge climbs a great cloud edged with sun whitened spray huge whirls of foam boil toppling o'er its verge and falling still it seems and yet it climbs away suddenly all the sky is hid as with the shutting of a lid one by one great drops are falling doubtful and slow down the pane they are crookedly crawling and the wind breathes low slowly the circles widen on the river widen and mingle one and all here and there the slenderer flowers shiver struck by an icy raindrop's fall now on the hills i hear the thunder mutter the wind is gathering in the west the upturned leaves first whiten and flutter then droop to a fitful rest up from the stream with sluggish flap struggles the gull and floats away near and near rolls the thunder clap we shall not see the sun go down to-day now leaps the wind on the sleepy marsh and tramples the grass with terrified feet the startled river turns leaden and harsh you can hear the quick heart of the tempest beat look look that livid flash and instantly follows the rattling thunder as if some cloud crag split asunder fell splintering with a ruinous crash on the earth which crouches in silence under and now a solid gray wall of rain shuts off the landscape mile by mile for a breath's space i see the blue wood again and ere the next heartbeat the wind-hurled pile that seemed but now a league aloof bursts crackling o'er the sun-parched roof against the windows the storm comes dashing through tattered foliage the hail tears crashing the blue lightning flashes the rapid hail clashes the white waves are tumbling and in one baffled roar like the toothless sea mumbling a rock bristled shore the thunder is rumbling and crashing and crumbling will silence return nevermore hush still as death the tempest holds his breath as from a sudden will the rain stops short but from the eaves you see it drop and hear it from the leaves all is so bodingly still again now now again plashes the rain in heavy gouts the crinkled lightning seems ever brightening and loud and long again the thunder shouts his battle song one quivering flash one wildering crash followed by silence dead and dull as if the cloud let go leapt bodily below to whelm the earth in one mad overthrow and then a total lull gone gone so soon no more my half-crazed fancy there can shape a giant in the air no more i see his streaming hair the writhing portent of his form 
the pale and quiet moon makes her calm forehead bare and the last fragments of the storm like shattered rigging from a fight at sea silent and few are drifting over me end of poem this recording is in the public domain After the Rain by Thomas Bailey Aldrich From the World's Best Poetry, Volume 5, Nature, Part 1 Read for LibriVox.org by Jason in Panama After the Rain The rain has ceased, and in my room the sunshine pours an airy flood, And on the church's dizzy vein the ancient cross is bathed in blood. From out the dripping ivy leaves, antiquely carven gray and high a dormer facing westward looks upon the village like an eye and now it glimmers in the sun a square of gold a disc a speck and in the belfry sits a dove with purple ripples on her neck thomas bailey aldrich end of poem this recording is in the public domain A Storm in the Distance by Paul Hamilton Hayne From the World's Best Poetry, Volume 5, Nature, Part 1 Read for LibriVox.org by Craig Franklin A Storm in the Distance I see the cloud-born squadrons of the gale, Their lines of rain like glittering spears depressed, while all the affrighted land grows darkly pale in flashing charge on earth's half-shielded breast sounds like the rush of trampling columns float from that fierce conflict volleyed thunders peal blent with the maddened wind's wild bugle note the lightnings flash the solid woodlands reel ha ah, many a foliaged guardian of the height Majestic pine or chestnut riven and bare falls in the rage of that aerial fight led by the prince of all the powers of air. Vast boughs like shattered banners hurtling fly down the thick tumult while, like emerald snow, millions of orphan leaves make wild the sky or drift in shuddering helplessness below. Still, still, the levelled lances of the rain at earth's half-shielded breast take glittering aim all space is rife with fury racked with pain earth bathed in vapour and heaven rent by flame at last the cloud battalions through long rifts of luminous mists retire the strife is done and earth once more her wounded beauty lifts to meet the healing kisses of the sun. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Rain by Ebenezer Jones From the World's Best Poetry Volume 5 Nature Part 1 Read for LibriVox.org by Lian Yao Rain more than the wind, more than the snow, more than the sunshine, I love rain, whether it droppeth soft and low, whether it rusheth amain. Dark as the night it spreadeth its wings, slow and silently up on the hills, then sweeps o'er the vale like a steed that springs from the grasp of a thousand wills. Swift sweeps under heaven the raven's flight, and the land and the lakes and the main lie belted beneath with steel-bright light, the light of the swift rushing rain. On evenings of summer, when sunlight is low, soft the rain falls from opal-hued skies, and the flowers the most delicate summer can show are not stirred by its gentle surprise. It falls on the pools, and no wrinkling it makes, but touching melts it, like the smile that sinks in the face of a dreamer, but breaks not the calm of his dream's happy while. 
the grass rises up as it falls on the meads the bird softly as sings in his bower and the circles of gnats circle on like winged seeds through the soft sunny lines of the shower end of poem this recording is in the public domain the dancing of the air by sir john davies from the world's best poetry volume five nature part one read for librivox dot org by sonia the dancing of the air and now behold your tender nurse the air and common neighbour that a runs around how many pictures and impressions fair within her empty regions are there found which to your senses dancing do propound for what are breath speech echoes music winds but dancings of the air in sundry kinds for when you breathe the air in order moves now in now out in time and measure true and when you speak so well she dancing loves that doubling oft and oft redoubling new with thousand forms she doth herself endue for all the words that from your lips repair are naught but tricks and turnings of the air hence is her prattling daughter echo born that dances to all voices she can hear there is no sound so harsh that she doth scorn nor any time wherein she will forbear the airy pavement with her feet to wear and yet her hearing sense is nothing quick for after time she endeth every trick and thou sweet music dancing's only life the ear's sole happiness the air's best speech lodestone of fellowship charming rot of strife the soft mind's paradise the sick mind's leech with thine own tongue thou trees and stones canst teach that when the air doth dance her finest measure then art thou born the gods and men's sweet pleasure lastly where keep the winds their revelry their violent turnings and wild whirling haze but in the air's translucent gallery where she herself is turned a hundred ways while with these maskers wantonly she plays yet in this misrule they such rule embrace as two at once encumber not the place end of poem this recording is in the public domain wicklow winds from wicklow by george francis savage armstrong from the world's best poetry volume five nature part one read for librivox dot org by craig franklin wicklow winds yes this is wicklow round our feet and o'er our heads its woodland smile behold it love the garden sweet on playground of our stormy isle is it not fair the leafy land not boasting nature's sterner pride voluptuous beauty scenes that stand by minds immortal deified fair when the woodland strains and creaks as loud the gathering whirlwinds blow and through the smoke-like mists the peaks in warm autumnal purples glow when madly tossed the bracken's plumes storm swept upon the seaward steep as far below them foams and fumes on beach and cliff the wrathful deep till cloud and tempest creeping lower old jorce's ridges swathe in night and down through all his hollows pour the foaming torrents swollen and white or when o'er powers courts leafless woods with crests that down the tempest lean bend braving winter's fiercest moods the pines in all their wealth of green end of poem this recording is in the public domain. Ode to the West Wind by Percy Bysshe Shelley From the World's Best Poetry, Volume 5 Nature, Part 1 Read for LibriVox.org by Thomas Peter Ode to the West Wind 1 
O wild west wind, thou breath of autumn's being, thou from whose unseen presence the leaves dead are driven, like ghosts from an enchanter fleeing, yellow and black and pale and hectic red, pestilence-stricken multitudes, O thou who charioteth to their dark wintry bed the winged seeds, where they lie cold and low, each like a corpse within its grave, until thine azure sister of the spring shall blow her clarion o'er the dreaming earth, and fill, driving sweet buds like flocks to feed in air, with living hues and odors, plain and hill. Wild spirit, which art moving everywhere, destroyer and preserver, here, oh, here. Two. Thou on whose stream, mid the steep sky's commotion, loose clouds like earth's decaying leaves are shed, shook from the tangled boughs of heaven and ocean, angels of rain and lightning, there are spread on the blue surface of thine airy surge, like the bright hair uplifted from the head of some fierce menad even from the dim verge of the horizon to the zenith's height, the locks of the approaching storm. Thou dirge of the dying year, to which this closing night will be the dome of a vast sepulchre, vaulted with all thy congregated might of vapours. Remove solid atmosphere, black rain and fire and hail will burst. O oh, hear! Three. Thou who didst waken from his summer dreams, the blue Mediterranean, where he lay, lulled by the coil of his crystalline streams, beside a pumice isle in Bay's Bay, and saw in sleep old palaces and towers, quivering within the waves in tenser day, all overgrown with azure moss and flowers, so sweet the sense faints picturing them. Thou, for whose path the Atlantic's level powers cleave themselves into chasms, while, far below, the sea blooms and the oozy woods which wear the sapless foliage of the ocean know thy voice and suddenly grow grey with fear and tremble and despoil themselves. O oh, hear! For... If I were a dead leaf, thou mightest bear. If I were a swift cloud to fly with thee, a wave to pant beneath thy power and share the impulse of thy strength, only less free than thou, O oh, uncontrollable. If even I were as in my boyhood, and could be the comrade of thy wanderings over heaven as then, when to outstrip thy sky's speed scarce seemed a vision. I would ne'er have striven as thus with thee in prayer in my sore need. Oh, lift me as a wave, a leaf, a cloud. I fall upon the thorns of life. I bleed. A heavy weight of hours has chained and bowed, one too like thee, tameless and swift and proud. Five. Make me thy lyre, even as the forest is. What if my leaves are falling like its own? The tumult of thy mighty harmonies Will take from both a deep autumnal tone, Sweet though in sadness. Be thou spirit fierce, my spirit. Be thou me, impetuous one. Drive my dead thoughts over the universe Like withered leaves, to quicken a new birth, and, by the incantation of this verse, scatter, as from an unextinguished hearth, ashes and sparks, my words among mankind. Be through my lips to unawakened earth the trumpet of a prophecy. O wind, if winter comes, can spring be far behind? End of poem 
This recording is in the public domain.